Hey there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. I'm your host Patson and today we're gonna be taking a look at r slash nuclear revenge where OP finally had enough of a narcissist. Let's begin. I went no contact with my narcissist mother over a tea kettle. She tried to ruin my life again so instead I ruined hers. Posted by reddit user Miss Boof. I'm 42 and to say that I tried for too long is an understatement. I tried the hands-off approach for my 30s and most of the time it worked. However, as I've been learning about my codependency and trying to heal from the trauma that this woman has wrought across my life, I've been much more upfront on calling her out on her bullcrap. I was patient. I wouldn't back down anymore and I'd often find myself feeling absolute pleasure at seeing her flying off in a narcissistic rage over me being able to beat her at her own game. Fun for a while, right? But I realized these talks and texts we had were coming at a price to my mental well-being. Sometimes I admit she'd get me. As a mom, she knew what buttons she could push to really get a rise out of me. I was trying to work on myself and started debating if no contact would be the best choice. That's when it happened. The thing that sent me over the edge was an old tea kettle. Backstory. I moved back to my hometown after my grandmother's health was starting to go downhill to take care of her. As she was a former nursing home CNA, I always promised my nanny I wouldn't ever let her waste away in one of those facilities. But with the move came drawbacks. My once flourishing career was gone and I was starting over at a smaller facility with much less money. In my mind it was more than worth the price of being able to take care of my grandmother. However, I would have to move in with my grandmother in her home and as I've said my mother is a narc. I wasn't crazy about this idea as I knew my grandmother only had a lifetime estate on the property. My mother would inherit and I knew it would be hell. Before that though, I got four more amazing years with the woman who actually loved me and supported me. Even through all the pain my mother inflicted upon me. Hue to when my grandmother finally passed. My mom sweeps into the home and starts to lay down rules and what I needed to do to stay in her home. Keep in mind, I had done all the upkeep of the house for the last four years. I paid for everything and never asked her for one damn dime of money. I know there's always a price when you ask that woman for help. So instead of bowing down and paying her rent to live in the house she wasn't even going to use, I made plans. I informed her no, that won't be happening and let her know of my plans to move. To say she tried every which way she could to prevent my moving is an understatement. From trying to drum up new things I owed her money for, to dangling the carrot of signing the house into my name, to letting other family members know if they helped me move, she'd never forgive them. I was 39, that's how controlling this woman tried to be. However, I just kept my nose down, packed all my things, moved absolutely everything I owned by myself and took off in a U-Haul not even a month later. After my grandmother had passed, I did try harder in an effort to keep a relationship with my mother. I should have known better, but I told myself, one more time, if she can't play nice then I'm going to cut this out of my life for good. It didn't take but five months for me to be completely done. Since moving, my aunt made a group chat for us and my mother, mostly to keep up with our day-to-day -day lives. Funny memes, just checking up on me and just wanting to know how my new home was. My mother would always say condescending things about my new place, but I would let it slide and remind her that I would have been more than happy to live in her home had she not tried to pull what she pulled. That only made her say that I was ungrateful for her not having charged me rent for the years that I lived there taking care of her mother and working full-time. Keep in mind, my mother remarried a doctor and took every penny of inheritance my grandfather left me. To say she's rather well off is no exaggeration. She's just that greedy. But back to my story. Five months in, my mother starts texting the group chat that I took off with items of hers from the house. Upon asking what it was I supposedly took she launched into a tirade of me never being able to tell the truth and that she'd never forgive me for what I had done. Again, having to push for actual details was hard over a text so I called. This is where the tea kettle finally comes into play. The call. So I called. She starts launching into me about how I gave an old cast iron tea kettle to my father, her ex-husband. I'm like what the hell are you even talking about? She explains what she believes. That I had, while living with my grandmother or after my grandmother died, given my father an old tea kettle from our wood stove. I let her know there hadn't been a tea kettle on that stove in years and I wasn't aware it was even missing. She had somehow found out that the tea kettle was back at my father's place. Now if you have a narc in your life, you know how they absolutely adore to twist history to their liking. This tea kettle was in my father's family for generations. I grew up knowing this. My mother simply took it with her in the divorce to hurt my father as family heirlooms meant a lot to him. So I kept explaining over and over again. I had no idea what she was talking about or how dad even got the tea kettle. After screeching at me for a while, 
I finally told her that I wasn't entertaining this notion of hers. I would call my father myself to figure out what had happened. She said I better fucking get the tea kettle back or there'd be hell to pay. The truth. So, I called my good old dad. Now my father isn't perfect. He's been pretty damn good to me. Especially after all the shit my mother put him and I threw together. From using me to emotionally blackmail him and intentionally sabotaging our relationship wherever she could. Aka, he knows she's a covert narcissist because he was married to her. So when I call him he answers with hi is this about the tea kettle. I laugh and say bingo. He then explains while my grandmother was alive, she felt bad that my mother had taken the tea kettle from him during the divorce and left it at her home, my grandmother's house. After I moved back in, my father started to come visit us. He always loved my nanny and she adored him as a son-in-law. They reconnected and he helped us a lot while she was still alive. He'd even visit when I wasn't at home sometimes. He said he noticed the tea kettle but never said anything about it to her until she brought it up one day. She told him to please take it back. She knew it was his and she didn't think my mom even remembered having taken it. As she took almost everything from his house when they divorced. He was very grateful of course and took back the family tea kettle. Fast forward to years later when my father was talking to a buddy about their divorces and he was admitting that he finally got something back from her even if it took almost 20 years. They had a laugh but the friend's now ex-girlfriend was charmed by my mother and told her about the tea kettle being with my father. Boom. She called him and started calling him a thief and that he knew that tea kettle was her family's and had never been his. He just called her on her bullshit and said well hell even if it didn't say my family name on it. Possession is 9 out of 10 of the law blah blah and on no uncertain terms let her know that she would not be getting it back as it was his in the first place. She was livid and of course he was amused as she asked how the hell he got it in the first place. He explained my grandmother having gave it to him. But for some reason she fixated on it being my fault. I had to have been the one to give it back to him. I was the one who gave her family's tea kettle to her ex. Tiring story isn't it? Though unnecessary and draining. Thinking that was when I realized I was done. The emancipation. So having got the full story from my father, I was texting to my aunt and mother in our group chat and telling them. My mother continued to call me a dirty liar and nasty comments in the group chat in front of my aunt. Now I am the most patient and understanding person. So while I really hate how my mother treated me, I would never call her out in front of anyone. I would always argue and debate behind closed doors and alone. As I didn't want to 1. Bring anyone else into the mess that was her abuse and 2. She was still my mother and I didn't want to embarrass her in front of anyone. I don't know what it was about this tea kettle that finally broke me, but it was the catalyst. But there were other things that made the tea kettle incident explode. While I had moved, my mother was still intent on having me move back into her home so I could take care of it until I inherit it from her one day. Huh? Yeah right. So I tested her on this a few weeks before the tea kettle incident. If I wanted to move back her conditions were that I would only have access to one bedroom. There's three, but she and her husband are hoarders. By the way, his touch in this was allowing me to have access to the communal areas of the house. Isn't that so kind to allow me one bathroom and access to the kitchen and living room? They're a match made in hell. The reason I'd only have access to one bedroom was they miraculously put their home on the market, and it was going to be sold. They were going to move from a three-story mansion to a three-bedroom cabin. So that's the reason she couldn't put the house in my name right away. It'd have to wait until they bought a new house. They would live in the cabin with me while the new home was being built and their old home sold. It's beyond insane, but this is how her mind works. I then told her no thanks. I'm very happy spending way more money being in a thriving city and having my own home with three bedrooms. However, it struck me. My mother likes to lie, a lot. So much so that over the course of years I was doing the hands-off approach. I would record what she'd say and replay it to myself to remind me that I wasn't insane. Because as I'm sure many of you know gaslighting is a hell of a drug. This house lie was another provable story. There would be evidence if it was on the market. One of my buddies who grew up with me is a real estate agent. He hates my mother because of how my mother treated his mom. So he gladly helped me look at all the listings from as far back as a year ago. Supposedly she had put her house up for sale about a month ago. He couldn't find anything about it. It's listed as not for sale anywhere, even as of today's writing. So boom, more concrete evidence of her lying. I had recorded the conversation with her and her husband without her knowing it. Don't worry I live in a one-party state. Because again, nothing comes without terms and conditions and she likes to rewrite history. Back to the future. I had recorded this conversation. I thought it's about time that I do something different. If I'm thinking about going no contact I might as well go out in a blazing ball of righteous hellfire, right? 
while she was attempting to humiliate me in front of my aunt again, I spoke to my aunt in a separate message. I'm sorry if you are going to be upset with me, but this has been 41 years in the making and I'm done. She called me worried and I told her the truth. Finally, I let someone else hear the lies she told me and in the group text I posted the real estate listings and how their home was not listed for sale anywhere. My mother started to go into panic mode and was telling more lies about how it's not up yet because it was so new. I let her know that was a lie too, as it had been quite some time since she said she listed it. My aunt gasped seeing her floundering for an explanation in the chat. I explained and she let me know. No matter what, she'd still love me and understood how after years of abuse I had finally had enough. The fallout. So as a narc usually does, she went on her rampage and started to blacken my name to everyone in our family and in our hometown. Not a big deal, I don't really like my hometown. The few people I keep up with are lifelong pals. They know the private monster my mother can be versus the public persona most people get. But for years it had been building. I had a lot of proof. However, I was trying to allow her to behave and back off. I had not answered her since the night I posted those listings to my aunt's group chat. But I was getting nasty messages from the flying monkeys about what a terrible daughter I am. I finally texted and let her know. Unless she backed down and stopped this campaign against me, I was going to do something to her for how she's poisoning my name and reputation. I knew from reading about narcissists that this was coming so I prepared. When she didn't stop and a preacher I had never spoken to contacted me via Facebook to attempt to shame me into talking to her. I saw red. I did it, I went full scorched earth. I made a huge group chat, with all of my contacts in my phone, all our family, some of her friends, some of her ex-friends, her husband's family, his kids, many people in our community, the preacher who decided I was a horrible daughter, many who believed her lies. Most of these people had turned their backs on me anyways, so I didn't feel too bad when I sent them all the nasty things she had said about them to me in texts, voicemails and the phone recordings I had. I didn't realize how much I had saved, all just to keep my own sanity with her gaslighting me. And I sent it all. At the end of it, with the story about the house being for sale and the latest live fest she had concocted shown, my father who was also in the group chat took a picture of the kettle. He asked in the chat, was this really worth it? <laughs> Many of these people had also wronged him in the community due to the lies my mother spread about him after their divorce. He and I then left the group chat. The conclusion, suffice to say, that ruffled many feathers of people. Many of them were upset at how my mother had spoken about them. A lot of them blamed me for being a horrible daughter and some have apologized to me. I don't care about them. I care about the damage I finally inflicted on the woman who hurt me over and over again with no conscience. I landed a blow to the weakest part of herself, her public persona. Her ego took that hit and now she can truly be the victim she's always claimed to be. All of this could have been avoided if she didn't lose her goddamn mind over an old rusty tea kettle that's worth nothing. Nothing but sentimental value, and not even to her. That tea kettle was just a conquest to her, a token of victory over her ex-husband. I win no contact that day. I have also cut off many of the relationships from the people in that chat even if they apologized. It's not that I don't forgive them, I just don't miss them. Maybe I'm a horrible person for doing what I did. But I can't lie and say it didn't feel good to finally show people what she's really like. I spent so much of my life trying to be the good daughter. That when I finally broke, I broke hard. I hope you don't judge me too harshly for my actions. But if I had to over again, I'd pick the same every time. TLDR. Mother tried to blame me for giving a tea kettle back to my dad she had stolen. When she kept calling me a liar, I showed years of evidence of her trash talking and lying about our family and friends to them in a group conference. Went no contact and haven't spoken to her since. OP, you thought that we're gonna judge you? Oh hell no! In fact, we are so glad that you are finally willing to put your demon of a mother in her place. What you did is the right thing. She's a monster and you deserved better your whole life. Well done, OP. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my channels for you to watch absolutely free. So please consider subscribing to me on Rumble and on YouTube. Both will be linked in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone, if you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and if you really like it, consider subscribing to Pat's Hunt to never miss a future upload. Stay strong!